So the only people receiving salvation are those that endure until the end. It's not about you knowing that you're an Israelite. It's not about you coming into the truth for a couple of years. It's about you enduring through your trials, enduring through your temptations, overcoming this world the same way that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, That's right. the black Messiah, That's right. overcame this world and endured to the end. That's how you will be saved. None of us are saved right now. The police could come up, roll up on us right now, and shut us all down. We ain't saved yet. Some of my brothers still got last names of their slave masters. We still ain't saved yet. You automatically got 20% coming out your check every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whenever you get paid. You ain't saved yet. That house that you thought you bought, you don't own it. 30 years later, after you pay the mortgage off, you still don't own it. Because if you don't pay the taxes, the one that does own it is taking it back. Because you never owned it in the first place. Read. Verse 14. And this gospel. And this gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. What is the good news? The good news is your, your avenger is not your enemy. Right. We read that earlier. At one point in time, we had to be free from the thought that our enemy and our avenger were the same people. Amen. The white man that oppressed us is the same white man that's going to save, that's going to save us. That's not the case anymore. Read that part again. And this gospel, the gospel, the good news is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, oh, Native so Americans are God's chosen people. That's right. We are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Right. Read. Of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. So we understood what the gospel is, and that kingdom is only for the people written in this book. The kingdom of God is only for you, my brother. If you repent from your life of sin Teach. and begin keeping God's commandments in the faith of the real Messiah, yeah. Jesus the Christ. That's, right. That's the gospel that must be preached to the four corners of the earth. Read. For a witness unto all nations, uh -huh. and then shall the end come. So right now, all across the globe, today for the Day of Atonement, we're preaching this gospel. That the so-called black man is royalty. Right. He's just not living in a royal estate right now. Right. That Jesus Christ was never a, a white man. And all the things that you learn from that white man, you gotta cast off to the ground. You gotta put those things in the garbage can and let him, him come pick it up on the corner on Tuesday afternoon, whenever the trash man went. Right. That's when the end will come. So we can bring forth the end of our destruction. The end of our uh, oppression. The end of our affliction is going to come at our own hands. Who got that for me in Luke? The kingdom don't come with observation. You got that? He's going to show you the sign. Does it mean that yeah, when he's a new SD card? Luke, chapter 17, no. verse 20. As long as and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when Christ was demanded of the Pharisees, read, when the kingdom of God should come. We just read about the kingdom. Christ said, when this gospel of the kingdom is preached, then the end will come. So he was asked what? When the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So the Bible says that if we want to inherit the kingdom of God, it's not going to come by us sitting back waiting for it to come. If we sit back and wait for God's kingdom to come, it's never going to come. We're always going to be niggas in America. We're always going to be gunned down in the streets. We're always going to be baby daddies and baby mamas. We're always going to be the last hired and first fired if we sit back and wait for Christ to come back. No, Christ... The Most High God, the angels are waiting for us to act. And when we act, they activate. They put things in motion to bring forth the end of this empire right here. My sister, what's your name? Sophia. Sophia. My brother, what's your name? Brian? Sophia, Brian, do you all like the current estate of America? Absolutely not. Absolutely not? No, not at all. Give me some reasons why. Come on, talk to me now. I'm out here because I love my brothers and sisters. Tell me what's on your spirit. First of all, I want to say that I feel like our children are poison. Children are poison. Okay. Give me something. 
We, our people are being hunted on our own doorsteps. The Bible says those things would happen. Bring it out. Because we broke God's commandments. Give me something else, Sister Sophia. We're being poisoned. We're being hunted. What else is happening to our people? I feel like black men are not being respected as they should. I feel like our black women are not being respected as we should uh -huh. because of society. Oh, praises. Those are, those are beautiful, excellent examples. You got anything else that you feeling right now in America? That heat, that, that smoke that's coming from America? All praises, all praises. Now, what our job is, is to take the emotions, the feelings, the experiences that you're having in life and extract those things out of the Bible to make the Bible real for you. The Bible has never been real for my brothers. The Bible has never been real for my sisters. It's been a fairy tale, a, a, a feel-good message for you to put your money in an offering plate every Sunday morning, sir. That's not what the Bible is. The Bible is a, a book of histories, historical records, and future prophecies about our people. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's all this book is. It's mysteries to this book for our prophecies, for our future. It's history that you didn't realize was in this book that's been here from the beginning. You ever been to church on Sunday? How about you, my sister? Do you still go to church on Sunday? All praises. How about you, my sister? All praises to the Most High God. One of the first steps for you to actually understand this book is to stop going to the establishments that were set up by your slave master. Right, right, right. All these churches, it don't matter who holds the position as pastor, have been guided by the beast, Absolutely. by Satan himself, right, right. by his representation on earth known as the Caucasian so-called white man. Right. So we must separate from these establishments to, in order to get the true understanding of what's happening right here. What you got? Uh, no, I don't even want to get into the white man. What I, what I want to do, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. I want to show you why you feel like we're being poisoned, why you feel like we're being hunted, why you feel like we're not being respected, and it's all right here in this book. And you never would have got it in church on Sunday. So sit tight, be patient with me. I'm going to explain the condition of our people and how to get ourselves out of it. Bring it out. Nobody's going to get us out of it but ourselves. The kingdom of heaven, what we, what we read when you were walking up, the kingdom of heaven will not come with observation. So it's not something we can sit on the couch and wait for. It's not something that we can look to someone else for. No other man is going to solve the problems of the community that belongs to the black man. That's right. No white man is going to solve our problems. We're going to solve them. That's right. No white woman is going to be our answer when we got problems with our black woman. No, that problem with the black woman, we're going to fix it. That's right. All these black women got to be fixed. All these black men got to be fixed. Right. Right. All these black, Hispanic, Native American children got to be fixed. Right. Right. And who's going to lead that charge? You are. As a leader, as a pillar in your community, you got to take charge and make the change. Without you, there is no kingdom. That's right. Deuteronomy 28, give me verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. I'm a, first, I'm going to show you where we're trying to get to. And then I'm going to show you how we fell short. All in one book and chapter of the Bible. Read. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. This is a conversation that the Most High God, through the Spirit of Christ, and the prophet Moses is having with his children. Everybody on earth is not God's children. You live in a neighborhood? Y'all got kids? Is everybody in the neighborhood your kids? They, to me, they are. Is everybody in the state of Virginia your kids? Absolutely not. All right. So this whole earth is like the state of Virginia, and God is like the position that you're in. His children are a particular group. Everybody else, just because they live in the state, are not your kids. Everybody else, just because they're on the earth, are not God's children. That's Read that. To observe and to do. So God is talking to his own children. He ain't talking to everybody else. He only talking to the people on this sign. The people referred to as African American. The people referred to as Dominican, uh, uh, Cuban, Puerto Rican, Guatemalan, 
Seminole Indian, Colombian, Mexican, Argentinian, West Indian, Haitian. All the people lined up on the border right now between El Paso, Texas, El Paso, what is it? Between Texas and, uh, and Mexico, all those are God's children. Those are God's children. So you got to ask yourself, hold up, hold up real quick. Let me scratch my head. A bunch of Afghanistans got flown to America, and right now the government is working out a deal to give them billions of dollars in aid. Bring it out. That's happening on one side of the coin. And then on the opposite side of the coin, it's a bunch of niggas who the white man refers to as niggas. The Bible refers to them as Haitians, the tribe of Levi. They all lined up on the southern border getting rounded up like slaves. You got to ask yourself why those things happening to those people, but the Afghanistans who so-called bombed uh, the Twin Towers, how is it that they get to come in, get put up in hotels, get cash cards, get billions of dollars in aid, but when the people that look like us show up, it's get the hell out of here. We ain't got no more space for any more of you niggas. Bring it out. Why is that? Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, answers all those questions. God is in control of everything that's happening on this earth, Sister Sophia. That's right. Everything good and everything evil, God is in control of. That's right. You ever had somebody close to you die? Absolutely. God did it. I know that. My brother, you ever had somebody get sick? God did it. Most of the time, God is going to allow evil to happen to you for one or two reasons. Or what? If you didn't learn your lesson, what happens to you? Well, you go pay for that. Exactly. To learn a lesson or to punish your hind pots. That's why evil is here on this earth. To prove whether you really love God or not. Everything good or evil still comes from the same place. So you got to ask yourself, why did God allow us to come here on slave ships and chains? But the white man came here on cruise ships, indentured servants. They got given, you know, different benefits, so forth and so on. Why did the Afghanistans get flown here on a, on, a, on a plane with cash cards, being put up in hotels, but the people that look just like us, they coming from Mexico, they coming from South America, they swimming through rivers just to get rounded up as slaves as the, at the border. You gotta ask yourself why these things are happening, read. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now y'all gotta be patient with what we're building right now. So God is having a conversation with his children, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. In America and scattered to the four corners of the earth. So that includes Haiti, Central South America, Europe, some parts of Africa, uh, uh, a remnant all throughout the islands of the seas. The Bible says that if his people, his children, would listen and hearken to his commandments, that they would be the greatest nation on the face of this earth. The greatest nation on the face of this earth. Are we in that estate right now? Not everybody. My estate ain't in that estate right now. Uh-huh. Okay. So right now, we live in the ghettos. We live in the hood. We live in the projects. We are not above all nations of the earth. Actually, it's the opposite. We are the bottom of society. We are the last hire. We are the first fire. We are hunted down in our own neighborhoods by our own people and by our slave masters. It don't get no worse than the condition of the so-called black man. But the, the first part of that verse says, if you kept God's commandments, none of those things would happen. So is God a liar or are we a liar? There you go. God's not a man that he can lie, first and foremost. So which part of that scripture is not being fulfilled right now? Huh? Okay, all right, what part? That's good. That, that scripture said if we kept God's commandments, we'd be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. So since we're not the greatest nation, what does that mean? That means we didn't keep the commandments. That means this commandments that we're supposed to be keeping right now, that we're not keeping, which is the reason why we're being poisoned. 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because the woman come together, they're so powerful, they can't stop us even if they wanted to. You know what, Sister Sophia? You know what's beautiful? God doesn't even need all of us to come together. Well, at least some of us to come together. God is waiting for a special number of us to come together, and he's going to take care of the rest. You know what that number is? 144,000 men. That's right, right. When 144,000 men say, you know what? I'm not shaving my face no more. Right. I'm not celebrating Christmas no more. Right. Right. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the Sabbath day from now on moving forward. That's right. I'm not going to have sex with woman after woman after woman after woman, after right. woman no more. That's right. Because I'm destroying my own That's sisters. Right. When 144,000 men decide to stand up and lead their community, so she can see this that. world is over. Right. This world is over for the wicked. And, it's, and it begins for the righteous. 144,000, that's not that many. That's probably less. Somebody somebody Google the population of population of Hampton, Virginia. Population of Richmond, Virginia. Somebody just help me out. I want to kind of get a, a idea of how many people that is. 144,000. Give me the population of a, a Suffolk. Y'all just look that up for me. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. Verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You got a stat for me? Okay. Hampton, Virginia. So, so we're imagining the whole planet Earth, right? And then if we narrow down the entire planet Earth to the state of Virginia, and then we narrow down the state of Virginia to just the city of Hampton, the stats say... The stats say that the population of Hampton, Virginia was 135,000. Right. 135,000. So all God is looking for is about the population of one city and one country of the United States of America to take over the entire globe. Now our people number the saying that it sees way more black people than 144,000. But the Most High God knows it's not even realistic for us in the condition that we're in today for all of us to gather ourselves together. You got something else? That's Suffolk. Okay, okay. And Suffolk is a little less. Okay. All praises, all praises. All right, so God said if we kept his commandments, we'd be the greatest nation on the face of this earth. We receive all the blessings. Let me show you the other side of that agreement. We made an agreement with our God, our Father in heaven. Verse 15, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is the opposite. God said, you know what? I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. I'm going to give you two choices, either life or death. If you keep my commandments, you're going to get life. You're going to be the greatest nation on the face of this earth. But if you break my commandments, so now we're on that part of the agreement, read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Bible says that curses will come upon our people and overtake our people. Have not, I'm sorry? Generational curses. So you try to do better for your kids, but your kids fall in the same traps, if not worse traps than you fell in when you was growing up. The Bible says all these curses will come upon thee and overtake thee. Overtake means you can't get away from it. If you go out to the beach and you get overtaken by the waves, you drown, you dead. We ain't gonna see you no more, it's RIP. We doing a service for you next Friday afternoon. Keep reading. Verse 16, cursed shall thou be in the city Everybody that's hearing the words of the Most High God right now, what we're doing is we're identifying the conditions of our people in the Bible. Right. We're bringing the Bible to life. We're not going to open up the book like your Christian pastors and tell you about what Uncle Tommy did last summer when you was growing up and him fixing the car and this, that, and the third. We ain't doing none of that closing the books telling you feel good messages. Our job is to correct you, to rebuke you, to show you your sins so that you come back into the fold as an Israelite keeping his commandments. That's right. Keep reading. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. The Bible says we will be cursed in the city. We will be cursed in the field. 
So when we were in those fields, my brother, my sister, y'all see these fields right here at the bottom? What do you see on that very bottom line? Especially right there in the, in the middle. What kind of field is that? Cotton field. That's a cotton field. And the Bible says that if we broke God's commandments, we would be cursed in the field. So what does that mean? That means we would be what in those cotton fields? A slave to the we would, we would be slaves in those cotton fields. Right. On those rice plantations. On those sugar plantations. On those tobacco plantations. Why would we be cursed in the field? Because we broke his what? We broke God's commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.